YouTube, boys and girls. My name is Hotzosti, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, uh, where quite a few cycles have passed since the last episode. Uh, probably more than 200. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I managed to get most of the insulated pipe in place only this this last piece here is missing and then we can replace this oxidizer tank with uh, a liquid oxygen tank and start getting liquid oxygen now why did this take so long well for 100 kilograms of insulation i need five units of reed fiber and one pipe section requires 400 kilograms so that's basically 20 reed fibers for a pipe section and if we go into our base we do not have good um set up to create reed fibers. I have some manuals here uh, to put in uh, the, the polluted water manually. I also have some automated one where we get polluted water from down here, but also from up there. However, uh, we are not really producing big amounts of uh, polluted water because this setup uh, basically only runs um, when we are out of uh, out of power which usually happens uh, when we do not have solar power and we have quite a solar power array and then of course uh, this one we only get uh, for any um, additional polluted water that cannot be uh, filtered. Um, so it's it's a slow process. We also get a bit from our uh, trackers, but it is really slow. So that's why it takes so long but we are almost there and I think we can skip ahead to the point where all the pipes are done. But as you can see, we have quite a bit of uh, uh, calories here on the side. And if we look at this farm, it's quite no noisy in here. And that's because there are about 100 volts in there. So on the food front, we are quite safe. Uh, however, we are probably struggling here with uh, this food because it's, it's just too, too warm in here again. And we cannot cope with with the cooling there uh, probably part of the problem is uh, water now here is above 30 degrees and we're pumping that water in here um, into the farming plots uh, that's not helpful but i guess we can add a few more duplicates to our base Let's see, we have one bed empty, but of course we can add more beds here. Uh, we have the space for it. And we have three tables uh, left open. Uh, so I think we shall add uh, three more duplicates if we can come across once that have good traits. So let's jump ahead when we have more duplicates and 
a finished pipe system. All our pipe is now done with insulation, which means we can replace this uh, tank and add a liquid tank. At the same time, I think we also should start this up. So um, we have this set up already going here. However, I think this one is wrong. And here we need to connect there. All right. And we can turn this one. Ah, uh, yes. There we have it. And in here we already have a super coolant that's quite cool. On this side the super coolant is not super cool. But important thing is that we get a bit of liquid oxygen in here so we can cool this set up. Um, Otherwise, we might destroy it. Um, didn't I say I want to deconstruct that one? And we have, uh, yes, so, and let's add a liquid oxidizer tank and hope that yes we have the pipe at the correct place um, then here we have two research modules i think we can replace those with cargo bays because with um, petroleum and uh, liquid oxygen we should be able to to get there uh, with high percentage. So uh, let's have a look. Currently we cannot get there because we do not have any liquid oxygen in there. Um, at least for the oxidizer the amount was the same so let's let's try this again and in here the oxygen is already at minus uh, 140 um, 5 so we should see soon the first uh, liquid oxygen in here and in here the coolant is uh, further going down of course I should set this up so the coolant in the loop is actually further cooled down
right that setup is uh, is running um Um, maybe let's not yet do that. Um, down here we are looking. Ooh, that one got a bit toasty. Um, we have two more um, sleeping cells, but we only managed to get. 10 duplicants uh, with relatively good skills and by the looks of it it will stay that way at least for a while all right i think we will wait until we can actually see a bit of liquid forming in these tanks here should not be too far into the future as the oxygen is cooling down as you can see we got the first liquid oxygen uh, and um, it just is dropping in here and uh, at one point this high pressure went was blocked because we had 20 tons of oxygen per tile and now that everything is condensing it's in uh, lower quantities and you can see currently we are not even cooling the uh, super coolant down because it's cool enough and once we uh, reach about this threshold we start pumping out oxygen uh, going into the tank and currently i we have still the petroleum engine plus uh liquid oxidizer um and i am thinking how much can i put in here quite a bit quite a bit so liquid oxidizer pank i will probably don't need that many however for the hydrogen i might need more so we will leave that one here on top however that means we would probably need to also switch out this pipe with uh, insulated pipe with insulation which is a bit expensive so uh, um, we will or at least our next trip will still be um, to that close asteroid where we can get a bit of insulation or uh, what is it called that we need from outer space it's iso resin and with that we can craft insulation should we have enough uh, reed fiber um, but yes here we can see uh, another issue um, for the unloading we cannot reach the 
the metal here from the outside so uh, uh, either we would place a gantry to build it or we can be a bit cheeky uh, and build the, the, the rail first and then place the, the module back on so yeah now it's once again a bit of uh, waiting time um, until we get enough uh, oxygen in here so we can start loading and then of course we also have to, to finish this segment up here um, before we can launch our rocket again and maybe until that point we get another duplicate for our base on the oxygen side we are close to the limit where this pump will engage but as you can see we get much more liquid oxygen than we get hydrogen and hopefully that will also reflect the need for our engine however looking at uh, uh, physics it's not really surprising because uh, when we look here in the pipe we have two uh, pumps that basically constantly supply oxygen and one pump that occasionally uh, produces spurs of hydrogen that's because hydrogen is the first element uh, in the periodic system while hydrogen or while oxygen i think is the 16th so basically uh, oxygen has a lot more density in the structure so that's why we get here a constant full pipe uh, while well for the hydrogen that's not really the case but we should see uh, the uh, liquid be pumped into our engine or our tank here at least once the the saving is done and here on the uh, hydrogen side uh, you can see as soon as uh, uh, the temperature of the supercoolant um, is too warm so that we actually have to uh, cool it down then you can see uh, it's all big action because for the for the hydrogen uh, if we look in here the freeze point is minus 50 nine and the vaporation is minus 52 so there are just a few degrees in between and what happens is uh, that the sometimes the hydrogen gets cooled so much that it becomes uh, solid directly from a gaseous form and that's why we have this uh, this noise in here uh, but on a on a whole we have it down here in liquid form and it is accumulating as it comes in and there we have uh, the the first 
liquid going around that loop. Uh, however, if we look at the uh, the setup here, uh, this valve here, the hmm. This liquid valve always goes through there. So basically we never pump in uh, uh, liquid oxygen into our tank. I think something is wrong with our, uh, with the wiring of our sensors let me figure that one out as it turns out we had here the wrong kind of uh, valve one that is operated manually now i have a shot off with a switch same here on the other side however the switches uh, they are reversed because here we need green to let it through and here we need red to let it through. Uh, however, that only works if uh, we have enough uh, liquid oxygen in here. And as you can see, um, currently this tank is full and we have to figure out how much we actually need in order to get here because if you look at this um, we are not there yet we cannot lift off so we have a weight penalty. Which is slightly below the total thrust. So let's add a bit more petroleum on here. Let's see if that does the trick. No, seems to have made it worse. So then let's just add the same amount of, um, of oxygen in here. And see what we have. does not make a whole lot of sense to me but let's just add this to 900 that's the the full tank and 900 here as well and then we will switch this one so when we have enough liquid oxygen we can pump it in and hopefully then this rocket can actually lift off the issue that we might have caused is we added another cargo bay uh, which is heavier than a research module so that's why we need more thrust to get the rocket off the ground. 
Uh, that one is also pumped in. Still not enough. Total range. Okay. In that case, what we will do, we will uh, deconstruct this uh, cargo module, replace it with uh, research module, and then we should be good. And when we come back, or before we come back, um, we will make sure that we uh, uh, clean out all the uh, the uh, petroleum here from the system so that next time we can load hydrogen and then we have to replace the engine. I think we now have uh, a setup that allows us to go places. Yes. Uh, let's just do that. Send our rocket out and then we can clean the pipe of uh, the petroleum so that when the rocket comes back we can replace it with a hydrogen engine and probably for future projects we will need more iso resin but also um, fullery so let's have a look here that's where our hydrogen comes in so we can take this bridge deconstruct it and once we have done that we can empty out this pipe here right and let's pump this out Just to clean up things a bit up here. And then we we'll let this system uh, run and wait for our rocket to return. And then hopefully next time we can start the next big project or the last big project initially I wanted to have a sour gas set up down here using the magma but as I learned that is probably not the most efficient uh, use because you can use magma but usually you use it to uh, boil the crude oil into petroleum and use that but if you want to uh, use sour gas um, then you're probably better off building it here on top where you have already a, a vacuum um, going so you don't have to pump out all the gases uh, similar like we are uh, used here where this is quite quite handy so let's wait for our rocket to return and we probably also need a bit more hydrogen in here in order 
to get things going. And then we should be able um, to get um, also more cargo base on there um, once we have the, the different engine. But let's wait for our rocket. And our rocket has returned, so let's deconstruct the uh, engine. We have 900 kilograms of liquid oxygen already in here. Um, we would also need um, hydrogen in here, but as you can see, we are not there yet. But let's just uh, add the uh, hydrogen engine here at the bottom. Um, then we will repair, or let's deconstruct this one, repair a new one, and so we can actually get that wiring in. We will deconstruct this module here as well, replace these two with cargo modules, and then we have to figure out um, how to get uh, the proper mix of liquid oxygen and hydrogen in our rocket so we can reach uh, the asteroids out there and looking at the map we are most interested in ice resin we probably need a bit more uh, niobium uh, so we can uh, get termium. We need that for our next project. Uh, diamonds always welcome. And then fullerene. Fullerene we do not get too much, but we can get both from the closest uh, asteroids here. If we have a look there, we also get fullerene. Um, we get isoresi resin and niobium but actually in smaller quantities so uh, iso resin we get here only seven percent uh, while here we have nine percent so these two closest are actually the the best source for that and probably if we go further out um, we might find some body that is better but we would to go further out we would need more uh, more hydrogen and uh, oxygen so it becomes more expensive so i think we'll just limit uh, uh, ourselves to the closest two as long as they can provide all that we need there so let me finish up the rocket wait for uh, the hydrogen to build up and then to finish this episode we can start our first hydrogen rocket how about that we are back with our hydrogen rocket, which currently carries 900 kilograms of uh, hydrogen and 400 kilograms of uh, oxygen, liquid that is. And I also uh, replaced back in two research modules because otherwise the rocket is just too heavy. Um, to lift off without needing enormous amount of uh, fuel. fuel not fuel so if we have a look here we can get barely above the 10,000 kilometer range uh, which is uh, what we need so once the door is open we will start 
and uh, collect more space materials because we will need them and um, we will not only need the ones from this asteroid but also from this one so we will alternate between the two so let's launch and hopefully yes some of our pipe broke this one um so maybe I mean, this is not a big deal because we can replace it. We do not have any fuels in here. And uh, this one, the isolated pipe did not break, which is very good. But we need quite a bit more of uh, hydrogen if uh, we want to continue with our rocket missions. But that's all for today, so next time we will start using some more of these uh, space materials, or at least set out to use them. Until then, goodbye!